Oh. Hi everyone, Koshan here. I'm about 40 minutes into a late morning hike. And during the hike, I was thinking about another idea for a fitness video. What this video is basically about is giving you quick tips on how to do a proper workout at the gym, also how to do a proper diet, and to get you started on a fat loss, weight loss program. This video is gonna help you build a foundation for a proper training program for your goals at the gym or if you wanna do other types of exercise. And this video will be divided into two parts. This will be part one. It will go over the topics that I just brought up earlier. And part two, well, I'm still trying to figure out what I'm gonna do with that. So, enough of me talking. Let's get this started. It is assumed you are healthy and free of chronic health issues when following these health and fitness tips. If not, seek professional medical advice before starting an exercise and diet program. So how is this video different from my previous fitness video? Well, I'm gonna introduce new information, information that I've only used with my personal training clients and my soldiers while I was serving in the military. A lot of this information is also I've used on myself for the past 30 years to help me stay in shape lose body fat or gain muscle and also to keep up my athletic performance now let's get started on how to create your own exercise and diet program physical activity is anything that gets you moving and raises your resting heart rate every week adults need 150 minutes of moderate intensity physical activity and two days of muscle strengthening activity to maintain general well-being. How should a workout be structured? This can be applied to any type of workout. Every time you do a workout, you should start off with a whole body warm-up for 5 to 10 minutes regardless of your workout goal. Then you should exercise for 30 to 60 minutes depending on your workout goal and finish your workout with a cool down that should include stretching for 5 to 10 minutes. If you are a beginner to intermediate level, focus on improving your posture, cardiovascular health, strength and endurance before other goals. An introduction to posture and how to correct common issues will be in part 2. How do you know your fitness level? It can be challenging to determine on your own without taking objective fitness tests. Some sources use the following time frames to determine fitness levels. Up to one year is beginner, one to five years is intermediate, and five years plus is advanced level. It's best to consult a professional fitness source with knowledge of your goals to determine more accurately your own fitness level. How do you structure your exercise program? How many times a week should you exercise? What should you focus on as a beginner or intermediate level? What workouts should you do to avoid being lost at the gym? Keep going to find out. You don't need to devote a lot of your time in the gym. Split up your workouts with strength training one day and cardio aerobic workouts outside the following day. A good weekly exercise schedule you can start off with is doing resistance or strength training two to three times a week and aerobic cardio workouts three to five times a week. Compound exercises use multiple muscle groups at the same time to perform a movement. Isolation exercises uses a single muscle or muscle group to perform a movement. Repetitions, also known as reps, is an exercise movement completed once. A set is a group of consecutive reps.
Do you need a resistance focused workout to get you started in the right direction for your exercise program? Use the following workout. It's the same one I use on my beginner clients to ease them into progressive weight training. This workout can be used for one to three months to prepare you for advanced versions of these exercises and to progress to specific training goals. Pause this portion of the video if you need more time to review it. Progress into the second and third month by increasing the weight for each exercise, increasing the reps and or sets, altering the rep tempo by moving the weight quickly or slowly, reducing rest time in between sets, pick one to do for each week, not all at once. You might be really sore for a few days to a week if you do that. You can start off with researching exercises by looking on YouTube or a search engine such as Google. There are many credible sources that can help you get started on how to do exercises properly and safely. If you don't want to spend a lot of time doing it on your own, a personal trainer or fitness specialist can create an exercise program specifically for you. If you are a beginner or even intermediate level, improve your cardiovascular health before you start weight training. This is very important. Start off with doing 10 to 20 minutes of walking and every preceding week slowly progress to jogging. Do this for about two to three weeks before you begin weight training. If you are going to do a weight training workout, start with doing whole body exercises first. These are basically compound movements that target the majority of muscles in your body. Then you can go to focusing on just your upper body or your lower body. And finally, towards the end of your workout, you can finish off with isolation exercises which just target one or two muscles. Beginners should always do resistance training workouts that are 70 to 80% compound and 20 to 30% isolation exercises to target the majority of muscle groups. For a whole body workout, start with back exercises, then chest and shoulders, move on to lower body exercises, and finish off with abs and arm exercises. For an upper body workout, start with back exercises, then chest and shoulders, and finish off with abs and arm exercises. For a lower body workout, start with upper leg exercises, then move on to glutes and hips, and finish off with abs and calf exercises. Rest periods during a workout depends on your current health condition, exercise program, and workout goals. For most workouts, one to two minutes between sets and two to three minutes between exercises is good to start with. You can do further research for specific rest periods related to your exercise program and workouts. It may seem simple just to start off with random exercises or a workout that you saw on the internet, but you need an exercise program based on your body type, diet, fitness goals, finances, personal and work obligations, and how much free time you have. A successful exercise program is tailored to you and not copied from someone else. For most exercise levels, whether it's beginner to advanced, you don't need to spend more than an hour exercising at the gym. 30 to 60 minutes of dedicated effort is plenty for most people. Those who should go longer than 60 minutes could be athletes, military personnel, first responders, or other jobs that require long duration physical activity endurance. Work on building your foundation for the first two to three months of an exercise program. Then take objective strength and muscular endurance tests to see if you're ready to progress to specific training goals. To test your strength, lift as much weight as you can for one repetition for an exercise. To test your muscular endurance, do as many reps as you can in 60 seconds for an exercise. If you are a beginner, you can start off with 30 seconds per an exercise. After these tests, you can decide to correct any weaknesses you have or move on to specific training goals for two to four months. What should you eat before a resistance workout? Keep going, it's simpler than you think. Resistance or weight training uses carbohydrates as the main source of energy, not fats. 
Eat some carbohydrates 45 to 120 minutes prior to your workout for maximum energy and to avoid fainting, headaches, muscle shakes, and weakness. Avoid eating long digesting fats, proteins, and vegetables. Stick with simple carbohydrates and proteins for pre-workout meals. Drink half to one liter water before your workout and continue sipping throughout it. Drink another half to one liter post-workout. A weak strength foundation, poor cardiovascular health, bad diet and recovery methods always hold someone back from progressing. You might see some progress from doing random workouts for the first one or two months, but eventually it will stall. You need to shift to one or two fitness goals long term to keep moving forward and for better results. Keep going to learn how. Plan a 12 month exercise program known as a macro cycle with a fitness goal you want to achieve at the end of it. Perhaps you want to build a solid physical health foundation. Then plan smaller cycles with a fitness goal for a certain length to help achieve the main one. These are known as mesocycles. Some fitness goals for each mesocycle to build a solid physical health foundation can be improving your cardiovascular health, building muscle, fat weight loss, flexibility, muscular endurance, power, speed, or strength. Ideally, you want to focus on one goal for three to four months and then change to another. An example would be strength training for three to four months, then switching to building muscle for another three to four months, and finally finishing off the exercise program with fat loss for three to four months. As you gain more experience and knowledge, future mesocycles can be broken down into shorter cycles of one to four weeks known as microcycles. Microcycles can be used to vary workout intensity, focus on more fitness goals in a shorter period, or even for recovery before moving on to a mesocycle. But for now, to prevent information overload, focus on a main goal for the macro cycle and then four to six mesocycles to help achieve it for your first exercise program. Due to the time constraints of this video and to keep it as an introduction to fitness, you need to do further research on your own to fully understand these various cycles and how they apply to your workout goal. Your workouts should have a specific goal as well instead of multiple ones. During your workout, focus on one goal for best results. Mixing up different goals reduces your intensity and progress. Instead, focus a workout on training for strength or power or muscle growth or to lose weight. Progressive workouts are one of the key components to a successful exercise program. Every workout needs to be progressive. Every time you do a workout, you want to progress for the best results. You can do this by increasing the weight, the sets, the repetitions per set, reducing your rest periods, increasing or slowing down repetition tempo, and combining exercises into supersets or triple sets. How do you know if an exercise is good to do? Ask yourself these questions. Is it safe and won't cause injuries if I use it long term? Can I progress in weight long term? So let's say you're at the gym, you're doing a bench press. Can you keep doing that exercise for six months, one year, two years, and beyond? Is the exercise I'm doing recommended by personal trainers, exercise teachers, and other educational sources, and not by some social media influencer or actors? This is very important for you to do and that is to record every workout in case your progress stalls. For everyone, their exercise progress is going to stall. The body adapts quickly and you will have to find something to get out of that plateau. So if you're recording every workout, you can figure out what caused it. Use the following template to create a workout log 
to help determine plateau sources in the future. Each workout should have a date and start time, your last meal time, supplements you had beforehand if you're going to take any, your current health and mood, your body and environment temperature if possible, the exercise goal, the exercises you'll be doing with repetitions, sets, and rest periods, how much time to complete the workout, and the time you finish the workout. I know this is a bit detailed, but these are going to help you later on if you hit that plateau. Even though this is a common belief, a diet doesn't mean to lose weight. It's the foods you, a community, or a culture eats on a daily basis. A better way to describe your diet is to say calorie restricted or calorie surplus. Calorie restricted means you're trying to lose body fat or weight and you're going to reduce the calories in your diet. A calorie surplus means you're going to eat excessive amount of calories to help you gain weight or build muscle. Most of your food should come from whole food sources. These provide the most nutrition per serving and are easier to digest compared to ultra processed foods. Regardless of what food manufacturers tell you, ultra processed foods have little nutritional benefits and some of the ingredients used have been linked to chronic health issues. Even processed healthy foods can be bad for you. These are typically packaged health foods, not from fresh sources. They add in a lot of sugars, fake fats to help improve the taste, and to help enhance its shelf life, they're going to add chemicals and other preservatives to be able to sell it in a store for longer periods of time. Every meal should be well balanced for optimal repair of your body and to maintain good mental and physical health. Every meal that you eat should have a carbohydrate source, a fat source, a protein source, fiber sources and micronutrients unless you are being told by professional medical sources that you need to eliminate one of these sources due to a chronic illness or some other medical condition. Here is a simple method to determine portion sizes for each meal. Alright, let's start with your protein serving. All you do is make a fist. So your protein serving for each meal will be about the size of your fist. Next is your carbohydrates. All you need to do is cup your hand and this portion right here will be the amount of carbohydrates that you're going to have for every meal. For fats, use this area of your thumb here to determine how much fats you should be eating. Fruits and vegetables, all you need to do is just spread out your hands like this and use this entire area for the servings for fruits and vegetables. How much should you eat every meal? Use your body type to determine the proper food ratios. An ectomorph body type tends to have an eye-shaped physique. They are naturally thin with skinny limbs, their arms and their legs. They have a fast metabolic rate, which means they burn energy very quickly. It's easy for them to lose fat and or weight, but difficult to gain muscle and or weight. They are thyroid dominant and can tolerate a lot of carbohydrates in their diet. A mesomorph has a V-shaped physique. They are naturally muscular and athletic, so it's easy for them to pick up sports or other physical activities compared to other body types. They have a moderate metabolic rate. It's easy for them to lose fat and or weight and also to gain muscle and or weight. They are testosterone and growth hormone dominant and have a moderate carbohydrate tolerance in their diet. An endomorph body type has an O-shaped physique. They are naturally broad and thicker compared to the other two body types. They have a slower metabolic rate, so they don't burn a lot of energy quickly. It's very difficult for them to lose fat and or weight, but it's easy for them to gain muscle and or weight. They are insulin dominant and have a very low carbohydrate tolerance in their diet. Few people are truly one of these body types. We have a ratio of all three. So someone can be 60% mesomorph, 30% ectomorph, and 10% endomorph. 
So as a beginner to intermediate level, use your dominant ratio for your diet and exercise program. Determine the number of servings for carbohydrates, fats, and proteins for every meal using your dominant body type and using the hand method that I explained earlier in this video. These following figures are going to show you the amount of servings you should have according to your body type using the hand method. How much water do you need to drink daily? We can use this simple formula to determine how much water you should be drinking daily. Just take your body weight and times it by 40. So for example, if you weigh 50 kilograms and you times it by 30, you should be drinking at a minimum of two liters of water a day. Add an additional 500 milliliters if the weather is warm or hot and 500 to 1,000 liters before and after exercise. Supplements are useful, but remember most are overpriced and can be misleading. They have no benefits over real food. The most proven and researched supplement from objective sources is creatine monohydrate with over 2,000 plus research studies. Creatine, which is a combination of three amino acids, is created by your body to help provide energy to skeletal muscles. Creatine monohydrate is a supplement that mimics what your body produces. It can increase energy for short bursts of up to 12 seconds. So if you're doing strength training or power training, this might be a good addition to your diet. Use supplements if recommended by a professional medical and or dietitian source, your diet lacks certain micronutrients or whole food sources aren't available. Losing body fat and or weight too quickly can cause many irreversible body and health issues. Malnutrition, hormonal imbalance, muscle and bone loss, mood swings, sagging skin, stretch marks, dry skin, and a depleted appearance are some of the results of rapid weight loss. Losing weight rapidly and repetitively can also cause long-term damage to the heart which may lead to hypertension, strokes, and even heart failure. General guidelines recommend not losing more than half to one kilogram of weight per week. While there is an abundance of fat and weight loss advice, easy to access in our digital world, most of it is anecdotal and individual experiences, even coming from weight loss companies and similar sources. It may not apply to your specific needs and goals. It's best to seek professional and experienced guidance for optimal results. This is very important, especially if you are overweight or obese. Before starting a fat and or weight loss program, do a physical checkup with a professional medical doctor. They can check for any health and other physical issues that may hinder your progress during your program. They can teach you how to get healthy for exercise and refer you to specialists who can show you how to lose fat and weight properly and safely. Here's the truth. A successful fat and or weight loss program takes a minimum of four to 12 months depending on your body type, diet, your habits, muscle mass, time available, and your training and recovery program. 
So avoid thinking you can lose fat and or weight quickly in two to four weeks. Even professional bodybuilders and models suffer immensely trying to lose it that fast. Start off your program using the crawl, walk, jog, and sprint method. Remember your body adapts very fast. What's going to happen is when your body plateaus, you don't have many other options to continue weight loss. You're either gonna have to run or sprint even harder than what you were doing before. What method has been proven by years of objective research and data to help professional militaries, first responders, and athletes lose body fat and weight quick? Definitely not Facebook, TikTok, or other social media sources. When doing a fat and weight loss program, just remember these three methods. All three of these methods should be done together for optimal weight loss results. Even though you're losing fat and weight, you need to eat well-balanced meals. Keep your total daily calories below your maintenance levels. Use it for four to six weeks and minimize ultra-processed and high-sodium food consumption. If progress stalls, use the following method. To find your daily maintenance calorie requirements, go online and search for a maintenance calorie calculator for an easy way to estimate your daily calorie requirements. Start off your calorie restricted diet by staying 100 to 300 calories below your daily maintenance calories to start losing weight. Every week, you can decrease your daily calories by 100, 200, or 300, depending on your weight loss program. Do not go below 1,000 calories a day to avoid muscle loss and other health issues. You will need to find a reliable calorie tracker and food information source to record your daily intake. If you're healthy, keep your protein intake high and consistent. Reduce your fat and carb calories depending on your daily physical activity and exercise program. Have a higher carb and lower fat calorie intake for resistance, high intensity workouts, and physically active days. For example, if your starting maintenance calories is 2,500 a day, for the first week, you would subtract 200 calories from a fat source and maintain 2,300 calories for week one. Have a lower carb and higher fat calorie intake for aerobic, long duration workouts and low physical active days. One of the best strength training methods during a fat loss program is weight training. Weight training gives you a large variety of options and exercises to help you maintain your muscle and strength during your program. The more muscle you have and the more intense your workouts are, the more calories you're gonna burn every single session. During a fat and weight loss program, you need to do resistance training to maintain muscle mass. Do it two to three times a week, but remember, your goal is to maintain muscle mass and not to gain it. Your daily calories are gonna be too low to increase it. Short but intense workouts for 30 to 60 minutes is best. Any longer and you risk losing muscle. Once again, remember your main goal is to lose weight. You can always focus on building muscle after you are done with your fat loss program. Every workout that you do should be progressive. That means you are doing better than your previous workout. Write it down so you can track your progress. Eventually it's going to stall. You can always return to your previous recorded workouts to see what caused that plateau. If you want to burn a lot of fat during a workout, you need to do aerobic exercises such as cycling, hiking, power walking, jogging and running, 
or swimming. Fat is used as a main energy source when you do a physical movement for a long duration without rest. This is something similar to aerobics. So to burn more fat, do physical activity non-stop for at least 20 minutes such as power walking or jogging. Start off by doing 20 minutes daily, 4 to 7 times a week if fat and weight loss is your goal. Every week you can add on 5 minutes to help you progress. If you can't do a 20 minute or longer session at once, you can split it up throughout the day by going for 5 to 10 minutes after a meal. If you will do aerobics and weight training on the same day, don't do it consecutively. Don't do a weight training session and then immediately after do an aerobic session. You want to focus all of your energy on one. Once you complete one of those workouts, rest four to six hours and then do the other one. You can start off by either doing weight training or a cardio aerobic workout. It doesn't matter which order you do it in. You will have energy to give every workout your full effort. Cardio is any physical movement that increases your heart rate and lung usage with the goal of improving your heart and lung health. It can be calisthenics, jogging, plyometrics, sprinting, swimming, weight training, etc. Anything that raises your heart rate to 50 to 85% of its maximum beat per minute. When doing a cardio workout, maintain a targeted heart rate between 50 to 80% of your maximum heart rate as a beginner. Here is a simple formula to determine your maximum heart rate for your age. Just take 220 and minus it from your age. So if you're 30 years old, 220 minus 30, your maximum heart rate should be 190 beats per minute. Here is a chart that shows you your target heart rate according to your age and what your maximum heart rate should be. This may vary depending on your health condition. Use a higher targeted heart rate such as 80% and above for short high intensity workouts such as HIIT, circuit training or sprints. A targeted heart rate of 50 to 70% can be used for lower intensity long duration workouts such as cycling, hiking, jogging, running, and power walking. You can focus on doing cardio only workouts or combine it with your strength and aerobic workouts. Start with 3-4 to four times a week for 15-20 to 20 minutes per session. Add 2-5 to five minutes each successive week to your workout. Here is a weekly fat and weight loss training schedule that you can start off with. While general guidelines recommend a minimum of 20 to 25 minutes of daily exercise to maintain your well-being, your body will adapt to it. When doing a fat and weight loss program, 45 to 60 minutes daily is more realistic for optimal results. Start off a meal by drinking 1 to 2 cups of water, then eat your protein portion first, followed by the fats, and save your carbohydrates for last. Avoid making drastic changes to your diet when you're starting off. Work on removing ultra processed food sources first for the first month. Replace them with whole or less processed food sources. Exchange sodas and juices with sugar-free versions or flavored water, high sodium goods with low sodium version, and packaged sweets with homemade ones or from bakeries that make them fresh. If your health is fine, increase or maintain protein and healthy fat sources while controlling your carb intake. Eat more carbohydrates on higher intensity exercise days, and less on low intensity and non-exercise days. Save counting calories as the last step in a fat and weight loss program. It's time consuming, requires consistent and attentive effort, plus reliable food nutrition information. 
Instead, start with this. These are the steps you can take for your diet when starting off a fat and weight loss program. Reduce and finally replace ultra processed sugar and high sodium foods with less processed and natural sources. Use the hand method to determine portions for your meals. Next, you can try eating according to your body type. And finally, if your progress starts to stall, then you can resort to counting calories. Losing fat and weight is not just about a calorie restricted diet and exercise. You need to replace unhealthy habits with positive and healthy ones. Avoid sitting for long periods. Every hour, get up and move around for 5 to 10 minutes. Quit illicit drugs, smoking, and reduce or eliminate alcohol consumption. Try walking to do errands or replace vehicles with a bike, skateboard, or something that requires your body to move it. Get 7 to 9 hours of quality sleep every night. Keep your sleeping area cool, dark, and with minimal noise. Avoid using bright gadgets 30 to 60 minutes before you sleep. Exercise doesn't have to be the main source when losing fat and body weight. You can try other physical activities that don't seem like exercise to help you along in your program. After completing a fat weight loss phase of an exercise program, it's important to keep building lean body mass or muscle but not to excessive levels. Having a higher muscle to fat ratio helps maintain a healthy body fat level and weight. It also helps minimize excessive fat gain and weight long term. One or two muscle building phases in your 12 month exercise program or macro cycle should be included as permanent ones throughout your life. Seek the advice of a fitness and or medical professional for an assessment on your progress, especially when it comes to losing body fat and weight. It's okay to ask others for their opinion on your progress, but don't base your entire assessment on them, especially when it comes to your health. If your progress stalls during a fat or weight loss program, seek the assistance of a professional fitness trainer to help you break that plateau. They can give you an objective viewpoint that can help you continue your progress. All right, everyone, that's it for this video. I hope you found the information useful. Please hit that like button, and if you want, you can subscribe. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, finish off this hike. Uh, please wait for part two. It's gonna take some time, but I'll get it out there. Until next time, stay safe, keep learning. Aloha.